Hello everybody and welcome to the University of Kent uh, uh, weekly live webinar uh, and uh, Professor Darren is here, uh, the director of the master degree of reproductive uh, medicine and the director of the PhD program of reproductive genetics and I am one of his students at the University of Kent and I will leave the mic for him to introduce our guest for today and our guest for today is a very special for Professor Darren because he was one of his students. So, Professor Darren, all to you. Thank you. Right. Welcome, welcome, everyone. It's delightful to have you all here. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you, Dr. Abdullah Almateri. Um, Abdullah has done um, a number of different things uh, throughout his, uh, his career, um, but particularly and most importantly, he was a PhD student with myself doing a uh, fantastic project in the world of falcon genomics. Today, however, he's not going to talk about falcons. He is going to talk about um, uh, the world of IVF, particularly in uh, in the Middle East. I'm very interested to hear what he's got to say in this new interest of him. So, uh, Abdullah, we're uh, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Darren, and thank you for all of you. Uh, good afternoon for everyone. Uh, today, inshallah, uh, we're going to talk about uh, reproduction and the uh, uh, technology, in fact, generally, and in the uh, UOE. Uh, I don't know if the presentation is showing now. Yes, it's all uh, clear and yeah. ready to go, Dr. Abdullah. That's very great. Well, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit science, general science about the inf infertility and the reproduction. And we're going to take about 60% talking about the management and the, uh, the opportunities in uh, IVF technology and generally the reproduction uh, technology, either in UAE or in Arab countries. In fact, uh, in, the, in the beginning, we want to know what is the definition of the infertility. Basically, the infertility, which is the, uh, the inability of the achieving the pregnancy. Uh, there are many reasons uh, belong the infertility. One of the main things, which is our genes, and this is a very big uh, field to find out the genetics which is inheritance to have the inability. There are um, other factors like the behavior factor or environment factor or the lifestyle generally. Uh, definitely, there are, there are some social problems, which is non-engagement of the heterocyclic relation. And we can confirm the, the, the patient or the, the male or the male or female having uh, end, uh, infertility once it's uh, after the 12 months of uh, unprotected sexual. Uh, al also, if it's uh, diagnosed for the anatomic problem in the in the in the body. Uh, we have medical infertility in it could come from the male or female. Uh, the percentage for the female and male is equal, 40% could, uh, could be by the male or f and 40% for the female. And there are some infertility uh, cannot be explained, which is uh, about uh, 20%. Once we talk about the female infertility, which is this is the most uh, really important, uh, where they, it's including the causes, the, either the ovulatory uh, disorders or there are any defect in the fallopian tube, uh, any damage, or it's related to endometriosis. Uh, sometimes there is anatomy probably in the uterus or the urine system. And uh, the common thing, things which is uh, common in Arab countries, which is uh, the aminology factors, which is related to the antibodies of the, sper uh, of the sperms. Once we talked about the causes in the male, in fact, it is only about three, which is most of them are related to the abnormalities of the uh, sperm, where the process of the spermatogenesis has some problems. Uh, definitely, there are some sometimes uh, problem in the in the anatomy of the equipment of the male, where it is the uh, the tubal back uh, the 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 plugs also. Uh, the, there are something which is related to the psychology or the psychiatric problem or the, which is related to the stress and the worries which is could affect on the reproduction of the male. But if you see the uh, diagram here, in fact, showing uh, the relationship between the age and uh, the fertility. If you note that here from the about 25 up to 30, it's if in fact higher infertility. 
But once we go uh, up in the, in, the, uh, in the age up to 35, so from 30 to 35, you notice the, the, the average of the fertility is less. Till we reach more than 39, which these people usually they need to go to the hospital or the clinics for the, the IVF to do and find another opportunity or another way to have pregnancy. It is in the same uh, of the of the male, but in, usually in the male they have uh, they have they having abnormalities in terms of the sperms once they getting old. In terms of the female, uh, the male factors, uh, the doctors or the, the hospitals they concentrate about the sperm par some parameters of the sperms to to have fertility result. The main things now we say we have the account of the sperm, which should be uh, more than 20 million ml by uh, one uh, one intercourse. Uh, the motility should be 50% with good quality of the sperms, and 30% uh, they have to have uh, morphology uh, of the sperms, yani good morphology or normal morphology for the sperms. Yani 30% it could uh, help to have uh, no normal pregnancy. The, in terms of artificial insemination, in fact, the scientists, they found that the donor insemination is more successful than the bilateral uh, insemination. And if, in fact, this is what I found in the literature review. Maybe Professor Darren later on can give explanation about it. Uh, the, the, based on the review, they said that 25% of the pregnancy happened in the, in the, in the, in the whole world, uh, which is, in fact, uh, it's not much uh, percentage, so a lot of people required to have the IVF or reproduction or go to the clinic to find out another way to find it. In fact, uh, the percentage is distributed in terms of the from five, 50 to 60 percent, which is unknown, etology, uh, 20 uh, 22, uh, to 25, which is genetics problem or multi-factors of inheritance. Uh, the environment, which is really important here, and it's increased the last, uh, we say, 20 years, the environment factors or the agents, which is from 7 to 10 percentage, uh, mutant gene, uh, it could be natural or it could be by exposing for the, for the environment or uh, lifestyle, which is 7 to 8 percent, and from 6 to 7, uh, which is chromosome abnormal in the human, usually happening in the when they getting more than 60 or 58. Uh, this diagram, in fact, showing uh, the different factors in the different countries. Uh, if you see here, uh, the much factors, in fact, in the male factors, while, while uh, in the female factor, it's less than uh, which found in the male factor. So, in fact, even the UE, they found the infertility is 50% of the infertile, uh, the infertile patient, it's coming from the, uh, the male. And this is related to the obesity and uh, diabetic and smoking, uh, especially it's not that once we come to the Arab countries and fertility or the fertili fertilization in Arab countries. Uh, you note here that in the, in the, in the, for above the 50 or uh, 65, or 50 and 65, the number of the patient, uh, the patient or the factors is less and the reason that because of the, the people who are visiting the hospitals and including it, this statistic is less than once they are in age, uh, say, 35 to, uh, from 30 to 35. If you see the Arab countries and the fertility, uh, which is from uh, 2008 up to 2018, in fact, if you notice in the 2008, it was 3.48. And in fact, in 2000, and two years back, it's uh, reduced to B3 to B3. The, 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 uh, the difference is not ma that much, but once you see it, that is the population for all Arab countries, so it's going to become very significant. The, the reasons we can say that either the social problems or the health problem or the environmental problem in terms of the pollution, in terms of the lifestyle, in terms of the obesity, also smoking, alcohols, uh, this all affected in the fertilization Arab countries. Here uh, it is known already about the, the main things which minimize the fertility and the reproduction outcome in the in the old world. Uh, the beginning which we talk about the natural and the, uh, the reproduction, uh, it's based on the life uh, lifestyle and the diet 
and also we they found there is there are relationship between the obesity uh, compared with the uh, infertility exercise definitely one of the things which is support the healthy and normal reproduction uh, the substance abuse of the smoking and alcohol uh, it's going to going to affect the last things which is common and related to the female which is the folic acid and then the natural uh, tubes defect all right uh, here we want to uh, maximize the which we want to maximize the fertility and protection outcome in the general health issue one we need to con uh, concern about the temperature this is especially in the male uh, because the in the testis of the sperms the quality is become the degree of from four to seven degree below the body uh, temperature uh, so the the, the 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 male who are living or they have a lifestyle which is using a lot of sauna or steam it could affect in their quality of the sperms physical and psychological stress definitely this is one of the part or the main part of affecting the fertility uh, especially in the male so there, there are a you know, big relationship uh, between the fertility and the emotions. A regular of the intercourse, and this is one of the main things or which is make, confirming that uh, the, 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 the couples are fertilized or not. So from two to times per week, particularly around the, the time or the days of the ovulation. Uh, the last one, which is the screening test. So uh, the, the new couples or the new partners they have to do the, some tests uh, to confirm that they don't have any problem, problems or difficulties to have a pregnancy. We talk about the, what is the ART, uh, which is the assistant reproduction technology. And this is how yani, it developed to have a lot of technique where they can help uh, unfertilize uh, couples, either in the, the male or female. And there are a lot of uh, things, uh, some of treatment if uh, if they have, uh, if the male or the female has a problem, but in fact, uh, if it's not works, uh, they could do it uh, in vitro, uh, and there are a lot of things uh, or a lot of techniques which is going to help to get the pregnant. And this now we talk about the human generally. If you see the uh, here uh, this diagram, in fact, in the beginning in 2000, before 2020, there are expectation of the uh, of the projection of the contribution of the assisted production technology, which is AR2, to the world population. So in fact, in the beginning, it start with the, uh, just IVF in the beginning, but the expectation for the future uh, of the, this technology, it's going to uh, having a lot of the uh, different technology to have the fertility. This is including, including the improtransfer, transfer, including uh, stem cell or cloning. Uh, this, is, this is very common in the, the animals, uh, but in the human, due to the ethical approval and the ethics generally it's it's minimized once we talk about technology and combination uh, of or related to IV if uh, nowadays it is very common especially in UE has been applied since about five years which is the PGD pre-implementation uh, genetics diagnosis and this is a common and uh, even the healthy people who can uh, have babies normally but sometimes they require to do uh, or to avoid any thalassemic or diabetic or any disease. So they could apply the PGTX, which is part of the IVF, to have the healthy offspring or healthy babies. This is one of the techniques which is advanced in UE, and we have a number of the uh, advanced center which they are applying with the IVF, the PGT. Uh, also, the storage for the frozen embryo, or the uh, sperm uh, bank for and this is uh, yani there, are, there are some uh, restriction for that it's not open for everyone it's only open for the people who are under chemo so if they want to store their sperms or egg it's allowed for uh, here we're going to take uh, the examples of female infertility and what's the option they have uh, for the premature menopause and genetic disease and uh, age factor they have only the option to have a donor egg. But there are differences between different cases. While the lack of the unstable uterus, the female who has problem or defect in the uterus, they have only the surrogacy, where they find uh, incubation or they find another woman who can take care of the pregnancy. Male infertility, uh, if it's abnormal, 
spare, uh, sperm or semen, and there is no chance to have a good quality of the sperm, so they have only the donor sperm. If the problem coming with the couples, uh, so the only uh, option to have a donor of the embryo. We're going to talk about this in Arab countries or PCC, about these things option. Here we show the, this table showing the, when, the seed per, when the female seed per month of fertility is specialized in different uh, countries. The, the, if you see it in the France and any part of the, or Europe here, it is in the number of the women which is seeing the, the specialist, which is eight, uh, 82.4, and this is based on the age. So if you see after 42, so we can say the opportunity to have pregnancy is about only 60%. Where uh, that, that's why the patient of the visiting the clinic is 60 percent, while in the starting from 35, where the the people or the female or male, in the, uh, especially female, once they are reaching the uh, 35, so they have less opportunity to have a normal pregnancy. So that's why this percentage is higher than less than 35 uh, years old. Uh, advanced IVM to produce the super babies of the choices. Within my reading, I noticed that uh, selecting the gender uh, is allowed only in UAE and uh, US, as, as far as I know. This is what I found in the British Review. So, in fact, uh, also the PGD, I found that's applied in the, the UAE, especially in the, U, the UAE, it's uh, welcoming and it is, in fact, uh, only coming for the, the industry of the health. That's why there are a lot of uh, clinics which they are applying a lot of technology. Uh, uh, I found, uh, you know, I checked the percentage of the successful of the IVF. It's reached about 25 to 30 in UAE. And uh, the income uh, is about, you know, per, uh, the period is about 200, uh, oh, sorry, $2 million. The, I'm talking about only Dubai. Uh, I didn't check the other, the other Emirates. But uh, the much, much advanced, uh, the IVF or the reproduction technology in UE, in fact, in, in, the, in the animals. And there are many reasons because, the, you know, to have the policy or regulation or the, uh, the ethical policy in, in animal, it's more easy than comparing with the human. Uh, in fact, the animals, it's, it's, they have done, uh, it's about six or eight uh, camels cloning, uh, and they did a uh, chimera between the hobara and the uh, chicken. Uh, where they produce uh, uh, spare hobara from the chicken. Uh, there are, as I said in the beginning, in, in, in terms of the human, there are PGD. There is uh, embryo transfer uh, in, the, in the cow and in the cattle. Um, so, in fact, uh, the work and the opportunities of business in UE, it's, it's considered more in animals. Uh, as long as we have in every emirates, there is a center for reproduction of the animals uh, and they success to uh, clone uh, the camel and uh, and the uh, horse uh, and they make a hybrid between the cama or a camel and llama which they call it uh, a cama uh, so in fact in the UAE there are much advanced and there are requirements for the employees and the qualified people to work in this field uh, in terms of infertility of the human in Arab countries, or especially in GCC, one of them UE, it is higher than before. I found in the literature review that's the main things, which is obesity plus the smoking. And if you find a colony or people who having both of them, this is having high opportunity to be infertilized. That's why these kind of people, either they... Uh, to, you know, change their lifestyle or uh, they need to have uh, the other option, which is the technology to have the babies. Here, I'll go back to the animal reproduction. Uh, in fact, uh, there are high demand of the animal reproduction UEs because, in fact, this is national interest, you know, especially the horse and the, the, the camel, also related to the uh, the, the requirement for the cow and the cattle, there are a lot of the, the you know, projects uh, running uh, to have uh, increased the number of the camels and the cattle. Uh, here, just showing that in between the 2013 up to 2016, if you see the total of the sheep and goat cattle, including the camels, increasing 
3 million point three and increasing to 3.5. طبعا this is not account all. This is the official register in Ministry of uh, Water and Environment. Uh, يعني there are a lot which is not registered, which is found in the you know in countryside of the uh, the cities. Here we want you know I went to do some British review about the requirement of employment and reproduction technology in Arab countries, especially UAE. The 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 the, the top uh, the يعني the job uh, required or have a lot of demand, which is the IVF technology, both in human and uh, uh, the animals. Uh, in fact, the animals is more than human because the humans require the specific uh, يعني qualification or require the specific approval, permission. Even you, you, even you are qualified, you need to take uh, some permission from the, or licensing from the Ministry of Health. While in animals, as long as you know the technique, it's enough to work with it. Uh, it's also the stem cell therapist required, embryonic stem cell research. This, especially in universities and the uh, research center, ethical regu uh, regulation, which is very important and very common since about two years, once the Emirates uh, are planning for the 15 years uh, in future, uh, they put a lot of policies under the government to find out and uh, to making uh, regulation for the ethics in terms of human or animals of, stay, of uh, using the stem cell and uh, the research generally. Uh, also, the treatment of the IVF and the stem cell, and it is this is in fact a combination between the physicians or MD and uh, the specialists who work in the laboratories to do the uh, this kind of research. Also, the last one, it's very common in universities and research institutes, especially University of Sharjah now planning to make or to develop a new master degree in the IVF. Here, one of the or number of the uh, yani very repetitive companies present in the assisted reproduction or ART. One of them is the you know the very common one and uh, the high qualified is RGC, which is number one in UK. And also, I found that uh, Care Fertility, Bloom IVF Center, and Carilona European, and the last one is Info Bioscience. All of these are produ yani producing and uh, making the making the uh, yani providing the uh, the training uh, and the advanced uh, technology for the for the IVF and the other technology. Here I found that the ART, in fact, in Europe, uh, the uh, real reduction uh, technology is the income is 8.72 uh, billion dollar, while while in uh, in the globally, which is uh, 21. Uh, and there are expectation to reach in 2026, which is 45 uh, billion dollar. And I found that the global assisted reproduction technology market, in fact, 79 percent point two, which is in vitro uh, fertilization, which is the IVF. This is the most common one. But also there are small percentage for the artificial insemination and frozen embryo transfer. Uh, the frozen embryo transfer, it's not existing in the Arab countries or GCC and the, 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 because they are waiting for the policy or the ethical and regulation to have this kind of uh, technology. Uh, the qualification required for the job, we, uh, I found that the, mo the main things which they found, the professional skill in analytical of the sperms and the techniques, researcher, the practical and the cell biologist with the sustainable knowledge. And as I said, there are uh, in Arab countries, I didn't find any diploma or master degree in the IVF, but the uh, Sharjah University plan to make a degree in the master degree or a higher diploma, which is in the IVF and the stem cell. Uh, this is what I have, and uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, attending. And I hope that uh, you, know, you get benefit of the lecture and the mic for you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Abdullah. That was a really, really fantastic overview. Um, and it's lovely to see it from the uh, perspective of uh, the, the Middle East. And, uh, you know, to, and you really brought out some uh, some really important issues there. So uh, please do, everyone, put some um, uh, questions in your um, question box. Uh, we don't have too many thus far, but this one is from uh, Manal Issam. So thank you for your question, Manal. Um, so, um, it's a question about determining the normal semen parameters. Um, 
is it um, uh, is it different in the um, in this part of the world uh, to do it, or do you follow do you follow the World Health Organization parameters? Oh, I think Abdullah's frozen. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 that's yeah. fine. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, definitely, they are following the international policies. So. Uh, uh, Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, this is, yeah, this, we, we follow the international standard in terms of the Simmons. But uh, about the, if you ask, if, if they ask about the frozen, uh, it is allowed for the, the medical case, uh, mm -hmm. for the, especially the people who are doing the chemo. So they are allowed to have uh, freezing of the semen, but for, uh, Apart from that, it's not allowed so far. I mean, they are working in terms of the uh, ethicals and they make a specific regulation as a private sector to have the semen. But this is some talk mm -hmm. about the government. And uh, there's a question here. Um, Shadi, you might be a better place to answer this one. Um, uh, applying yeah. for the role of an IVF technologist in an Arab country, um, um, I probably will, will massacre his name here, but uh, Uchi. Uche Chukwu Kalu um, is asking that. Um, Mayas, are you there? Please come in because you work in Riyadh, work in London. Uh, are you there, Mayas? Yes. Uh, Mayas would be perfect yeah. because she works in, London, uh, in Riyadh. Please. Thank you, Professor. So, um, the uh, regulation for uh, uh, IVF uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia basically that uh, they ask for um, uh, a degree in uh, clinical laboratory sciences and then if somebody gets a master's degree uh, afterwards so they can be accredited. So a, a master's degree first and then working in a clinic to, uh, to become accredited, is that right? Yeah, uh, usually, usually they can start by working, but most of the embryologists, uh, not most of them, like let's say 50%, they did their master's and then they started their career. Some of them, they started their IVF um, work in a clinic. They get like one or two years of experience, then they did their master's degree. Uh, but it doesn't matter if, uh, if it comes anyway, but it needs both qualifications, the experience and the master degree to be accredited uh, mostly as an IVF um, or as an embryologist. Okay. Um, Abdullah, are um, a lot of people freezing their eggs um, at an early age uh, in order to try and um, preserve them to have a family later? Does that happen a lot? Well, that, not that much, honestly. The, but the, it is common. I found it. You know, I make some contact in hospitals. It is common even with the young people. But if they have any uh, uh, problems in terms, usually the cancer, because they have to have a lot of the dosage of the chemo. So this one, it could destroy the, the sperm and the testes in terms of male. That's why these people are advised by the medically to have it. Uh, but in here, in uh, I'm talking about UE, uh, for the luxury, just to uh, st store it, it's not allowed uh, unless they go to abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, someone asking about um, doing um, online courses free. Um, well, um, uh, uh, to some, any possible to get free online training the IVF techniques. So there are. Uh, you can watch these seminars. There, there is another seminar series called I3, which is uh, free. But if you want to do the training courses, then uh, obviously there's um, uh, you have to start paying for those. So uh, thank you for that question, uh, Amina. Um, we will mention, we will should, go ahead, we will mention the after the Q and A. Right, right. No okay. worries. But, but I think Dr. Dashadi has a, a good, a very advanced center in Dubai. And he can provide the, the, the any uh, very advanced courses, uh, mm -hmm. and especially Dubai is is you know, it can say that it is common with the, all people who are usually visiting Dubai. So uh, mm -hmm. they can make it as a tourism and at the same time with the, the as a course. 
يعني افتر باسنج ذا ذيس كونفيدنت ذيس كونديشن ويتش از كوفيد 19 يس ثانك يو دكتور عبد الله وي ويل بريزنت اور كورسز اميديتلي افتر يور كيو ان اي ذاتس ثانك يو بروفيسور بروفيسور دان وي كان نوت سي يور يور بيكتشر ذا رام Yes. yes. <laughs> when, when someone was speaking, I didn't really want to uh, distract them. So um, uh, this is from Joseph. So according to the answer, is it only a medical laboratory scientist that can work in an Arab country as an embryologist? Is that true? You have to be a What medical laboratory scientist. Sorry, again? You mean uh, you, only you, the... You have to be a medical laboratory scientist. I think that's true, isn't it? Yeah, 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 exactly. And also not only the, the, the I mean, the, even the MD, the, the student who graduated from the medicine college, they can have uh, some training in the laboratories and they work. Mm -hmm. the, after yeah. permission, yeah. Especially yeah. The, 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 speciali the specialization of the uh, gyne, uh, gyne who can uh, take some courses in the laboratories. And they can do it there. Yes, of okay. course. Uh, there is scientists and there is gynecologists, there is doctors, there is biotechnology. Yes, yes. I started my career uh, from pharmacy school. So I converted to reproductive medicine. So uh, if anybody have uh, a bachelor in science, I think uh, they are very potential to move to the IVF uh, world. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so we've got from Nelson Vincent here. A uh, clinician with um, over eight years' experience in management of infertility uh, in Nigeria. Um, sorry, it's quite a long one here. Just trying to shorten it down. Um, so you work in the Gulf countries and an embryologist. So if someone is previously a clinician and wants to work in the Gulf countries and an embryologist, um, is that, that's presumably doable as well, is it? Yes, uh, but he needs to get minimum a master degree. He needs experience in clinical embryology, and he will apply for a license, and he will be absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, Darren, it is including the veterinarian. I think the veterinarian has the ability to work in this field. Correct. Mm -hmm. my, my colleague in London, at the RGC, he is one of the top embryologists, and he have a, a bit uh, medicine degree. Uh, to start with, <laughs> and he's very yes. good. Um, okay, I think we're, we're there with the questions. There's some very specific ones um, about um, oxygen conditions and so on, but I think that's more for the for labs and so on. So, um, Shadi, are you gonna tell us about um, uh, some courses yes. and what's coming next week and that sort of thing? Yes, but if you allow me, Professor Darren, we have two questions, Paul, uh, for, uh, Dr. Abdullah, we just, uh, if you don't mind to launch them, it will take 15 seconds. Okay, go for it. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, so the first, uh, oh, guys, please, uh, we're gonna, uh, 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 gonna come on your screen at this poll, so please let us know if uh, the answer, thank you. So the question is, would you be interested in the attending the University of Kent master degree in reproductive medicine? Uh, so if anybody that, who is uh, interested to continue in clinical embryology IVF uh, field, he need to start with uh, uh, converting to uh, a master degree to start with. So please, if you don't mind to give us your answers, a few seconds and then we're gonna stop the poll. Nice, there's a lot of people answering. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, guys, keep the answers coming. A few seconds more. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, thank you guys very much. We have another question for uh, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, the question says, here we go. We're gonna launch now. Thank you. Says, if you have the opportunity to work in reproduction field, do you prefer to work in human reproduction or animal reproduction? So either IVF for human or IVF for vet. We really like to hear your, uh, your answers, please. Yeah, keep the answers coming. There is a big, big demand on human reproduction 
Dr. Abdullah, Professor Darren. Okay, so we'll close this poll and uh, I am going to uh, share my screen and, and launch the genetic course. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, Chad. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for attending our webinar. We're just uh, going to go very uh, briefly and quickly to tell you about our genetic and PGT training course that has been designed and certified by the University of Kent, brought to you by the IVF company and hosted by Tri-C Academy in Dubai. So I'm just going to dive in on the course structure. The modules comes from the Master's Degree of Reproductive Medicine at the University of Kent. Uh, it consists of eight weeks of online with the University of Kent. And uh, just, to, just to show you, uh, let me magnify it. Yeah. So the first week, starting on the 7th of March, we will have a live webinar with the University of Kent to welcome you. Professor Darren will be there. And uh, we will give you uh, a few uh, lectures uh, like Love My Genome by Professor Darren, a bit of reproductive genetic, fluorescence microscopy, so you know how to use that, how to maintain your lab book, how to be a successful scientist, and we will let you access uh, independent and reading list from the University of Kent. And every uh, Monday, we will have a live webinar to go through your questions and to make sure uh, uh, that you got the most of that week. And then the week two starts on the 14th of March. So we will go through about BGT lecture, uh, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, some beautiful uh, lectures from our external professors from uh, Kent University and again independent study and we will see you another on Monday the 22nd for live tutorial to make sure you got the most of that week. We will move to week three which is start the 21st of March. We'll talk about the screening of chromosomal translocation in animals, PGT in animals, embryo biopsy and micro manipulation and also we'll give you a bit of an independent study and live webinar again on Mondays. Uh, and then week four, we will do a bit biopsy plastomere tubing, moving the biopsy embryos, a little bit about our master degree at the University of Kent. And also we will tell you about embryo grading for biopsy and cryopreservation and vitrification. And you will hear the famous uh, uh, lecture for Professor Darren about dinosaur DNA. You really need to see this. Again, we will see you in a live webinar to make sure you, we answer all your questions. And then there are another four weeks of practical videos that me and my colleague, Dr. Mayas, that we went to the lab and recorded for you. We started from the BGT lab tissue culture that starting on week five on the 4th of April about a septic technique, media preparation equipment for BGT, quality control protocol for BGT. And then we're going to have a live tutorial for you, Q and A. And then week six, we'll do a bit of day three biopsy uh, day three embryo grading. I know it's an old technique, but you need to know all the techniques inside the IVF lab. And then we will give you a little bit of slide, slide preparation and blastomere fixation. We'll do another tutorial and then we jump to week seven. Uh, we will do a day five biopsy setup, a day five embryo grading, biopsy protocol, tubing, and then a bit of CGH and NGS and then tutorial. And the last week, we do a little bit of knowledge about DNA extraction. DNA amplification, neck translocation, fish slice staining. We will end week eight. We will graduate the student for the theory, and then we will wait for the most important thing, the practical session in Dubai in our training center, Tri-C Academy. Once the COVID is finished and the vaccine rollout is done, we will happy and allowed to do the face-to-face -face, uh, training. So we're gonna do a laboratory technique. All our practicals is going to be on animal gamete. So you can see really action what's happening inside the IVF lab. We'll talk about media preparation, microscopy training. Uh, we'll do mini prep for DNA and agar plates, take concentration purity of reading. We'll do setup amplification of isolated DNA, next translation for amplified DNA, and then fish session for fish setup. Sorry, first session for the fish setup, and then the second session as well. We will do karyotyping practical from the Karyo lab from Kent University. And then the last day, we will do embryo biopsy micro manipulation hands on. 
assignment in groups, and then bioxoplastomer tubing, we will do vitrification, and then break, and then we'll do the final assessment quiz and concluding remarks. We will also take you to our partner, Daryl Hikma in Sharjah, so you can see the clinical diagnosis lab face to face, so you can have an idea of what's happened inside the, the, the diagnostic lab. The assessment structure, it comes from uh, our master degree. So now uh, I am done with this. So now I want to leave the screen to uh, my colleague, Mayas Jawish. She will go through the IVF of course that was starting in the 7th of March. We we like to hear from you. Okay, Dr. Mayas, your screen, if you want to share it, uh, I will give you the control now. Yes, please share it. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, can you see my screen, Shadi? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So uh, this is the in vitro fertilization training course that is designed and certified by the University of Kent and the IVF company. We have a one weeks course that is made of both theoretical and practical sessions. So we will have a four week, weeks of theory and followed by four weeks of practical videos that made in the lab uh, because of the current situation of the COVID. And inshallah, when we are able to gather again, we will do the practical. So to have a, an overview of our course, the theoretical part, we will have four modules. The first one will be lectures by Professor Darren about reproduction and IVF, male reproduction, female reproduction. We will also teach you how to write a patient facing leaflet and how to talk to patients. We will give you some independent studies to increase your skills. And then we will have four live webinars throughout the four weeks. On the second week, we will have an introduction to animal IVF by Dr. Giuseppe. We will see a short documentary about making babies uh, recorded by Professor Darren. We will also have a look into basics of reproduction. Uh, you will study about sperm DNA damage. Uh, also, they will give you an overview about the Masters in Reproductive Medicine in the University of Kent. Uh, again, we will have a second live webinar or tutorial by the end of, next, of the second week. Then, when we start the third week, you will uh, learn about laboratory techniques and how to have a good practice inside the IVF lab by Dr. Lucas. You will study about andrology theory, semen analysis and practical in the uh, andrology lab, uh, procreation, pregnancy and parturition about Professor Darren, how to maintain your lab book given by Dr. Giuseppe. You will learn also about meiosis in the oocyte, embryo morphology grading, and again, we, you will have another live tutorial. So by going into the last week of the theoretical part, we will give you a small lecture, or it's a big one, about culture media by Dr. Giuseppe. Also, we will teach you about blastocysts, aseptic uh, aspects of uh, time-lapse imaging. We will talk to you about micromanipulation, ICSI, cryopreservation, and then we will finalize the theoretical course by a live tutorial. So then you will start a four weeks of practical videos online. These videos are aimed to show you how we do the actual work inside the lab. So you have a clear vision how you be like a good scientist and a skilled embryologist inside an IVF lab. So we will teach you about aseptic techniques, how we prepare media and what are different types or different cultural conditions. We will show you about different equipments exist in the IVF lab. Also, we will teach you how to keep quality control and how to follow protocols in the IVF lab. Uh, we will teach you about how to maintain 
all the data for semen collection, how to do the semen analysis, how to do the sperm function test inside the IVF lab. Also, how we prepare sperm for different treatment cycles, like for IUI, IVF, and XC. How we do sperm freezing and towing. How we do the epididymal and testicular sperm retrieval. And we will talk about retrograde ejaculation. And the last week, or the seventh week, will be about oocyte retrieval. We will talk also about disposables and tools used usually in the IVF lab. How we grade oocytes and how we do the insemination procedure. Then last week will be about fertilization check, so how we know that everything went good and we check the, our fertilized oocytes. We will also show you how to do embryo culture and how to grade your embryos afterwards, how we do the embryo transfer in the lab, and finally, we will teach you how to do embryo vitrification. And at the end of each, practical week also we will have a live tutorial to get in touch with you and to answer all your questions and hopefully when we finish all the pandemic and the corona situation we will meet you in dubai and give you the chance to do your practical hands-on on animal gametes you will have lots of chance to experience how we do the actual work in ibf lab and how you be a skilled embryologist and how to start your career in IVF. And thank you so much. I hope that you are interested in our courses and I hope that you like our webinars. Thank you, Shadi. Thank you, Professor Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Mayas. If uh, Richard, can you give me please uh, the, the control of the screen. Thank you. Uh, yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dr. Abdullah, are you there? Dr. Abdullah, my ass, where did you guys disappear? Yes, Shadi, I'm here. Dr. Abdullah, are you there? I think, yes, he's here. I don't know, yes. he should just turn on his camera. M Melissa, would you kindly just give uh, the video uh, to Dr. Abdullah? Thank you. Okay, guys, uh, until we give the camera of Dr. Abdullah, I'm going to launch uh, two polls, one for the genetic and one for the IVF. So please, please keep the answers coming. I'm going to start now with the genetic course. So here we go. Thank you. So, would you be interested uh, in the University of Kent PGT and genetic course on the 7th of March 2021? Uh, please, if you don't mind to uh, just answer yes or no, so we will, we will uh, know uh, your interest uh, and make sure that we try to help as much as we can in the Middle East and Africa and India to bring you the course from the University of Kent from the UK. So, yes. Thank you. Very, very uh, good uh, response. Thank you very much. Yes, few seconds more, guys. Please keep the answers coming. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to launch the IVF just for a few seconds as well. So kindly, if you tell us about the IVF course. So would you be interested in the University of Kent, the IVF course? On the 7th of March, uh, just say yes or no. Uh, that I'm bringing this from the university from the UK to the Middle East and Africa and India. So please, if you uh, let us know your uh, opinion, we will try to bring you the latest from the University of Kent and sharing the science in this part of the world in the Middle East and if Africa and India. Uh, so please, if you don't mind, to let us know. Thank you. Very good response. Yes, few seconds more, guys. Few seconds more. Perfect. Excellent. So, perfect. So, uh, we have uh, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, uh, um, I think you have a problem with the camera. 
So guys, if you have any question about the genetic course and the IVF course uh, uh, in the 7th of March, uh, please just uh, put it in the question box and we will answer all your questions. So, do we have a question? Okay, yes. Uh, we have a question from Dr. Mustafa Attarik. What the course fees? The course fees for the nine weeks will be 7,500 dirham, which is $2,000 for the professional. And we have fees for the undergraduate student if they come in, 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 in a bundle or uh, uh, they come in, in groups. So please, if you want the details, please uh, uh, send us an email on support at the ivfcompany.com or, or at uh, our Tri-C Academy, rachel.lunaro uh, at Tri-C Academy, as you see it on the screen. Thank you. So is the webinar recorded? Yes, it is recorded. So please uh, let us know if you are interested because we are making a very library, a good library for everybody as a community that who are joining us. Uh, uh, about the certificate, yes, there is a certificate. And uh, please let us know. Uh, we will uh, email you all the certificate. Please let us know that your email address so we can send you your uh, attend certificate of attendance. Okay, it says uh, that this course is only for doctors or management department person uh, also is attending. This course is for doctors, for uh, nurses, for uh, science, uh, for science students, for anybody with any basic science background. It's absolutely, uh, it, it can cover all this range of uh, students from medical laboratory, nurse, medical school, biotechnology, all the science background. So the fees, yes, the fees for BGT exactly the same as the IVF. So please uh, drop us a line and give us your email. We will send you all the details of March the 7th, BGT and the IVF course. Uh, they're interested. There's a lot of interest in the course. I'm very, very excited. The course also, yes, uh, the Kashna Goni, Yes, we will send you the details. Just please send us your email. Muhammad Adil Khan. Yes, we have your email. We will send you all the details. Thank you very much. How can I benefit from these courses as applied physics student? Okay, uh, please drop us an email. We will send it to Kent University to see if you can attend these courses or not. Uh, these courses are certified and it's part of uh, the master degree. So uh, it, it is a very shift up towards the master degree. Can a veteran student to do this course? Absolutely. Absolutely, the vets can attend these courses. In the end of the day, it's an exit procedure. Uh, so please, uh, yes, uh, send us your email. Uh, kindly send a BG2 course, a BGT course detail, absolutely. Please uh, send us an email, uh, uh, Mr. Dakasha, and we will send you. Uh, Mr. Joseph, we have your email. We'll send you all the details. Amazing. Uh, uh, yes, my voice is, uh, is uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so many questions. Uh, I, okay, I, I, will, I will finish it up if you want to help. Uh, what else? Uh, we have questions. Does the course require to have advanced mathematical skills? No, no, absolutely no. Because these courses are like uh, more about uh, biology and chemistry and like you don't need to have any advanced mathematical skills. Um, uh, many people, Shadi, are sharing their emails, which is amazing. So we will contact everyone. We will send you emails regarding all the details about the courses, about the IBF and PGT starting Perfect. in the seventh of March. Perfect. Okay, guys, let's wrap up. Uh, just to let you know that the webinar will be available on the IBF YouTube page in one week from today and it will be sent to you as a via email link um, I'm, I'm reading uh, our operational manager Melissa instruction thank you so much Melissa uh, for being with us so uh, before I thank everybody that who made this uh, webinar come to life 
I want to tell you with honor that we have uh, two of our PhD students, uh, Abdullah Idris. He is a PhD student in, in, in Newcastle University in the UK, and also he's a senior embryologist in King Faisal Hospital in Riyadh, and he will be presenting next week on Tuesday, the 2nd of March at 8 p.m. Dubai time, 4 p.m. London time about clinical application for electron microscope in reproductive research field. And with pleasure, I announce Aya Faisal, our PGT student. She is a junior embryologist from Yasmin, from Yasmin uh, IVF and Fertility Center in Egypt. Uh, and she will be talking about the revolutionary technique and not invasive BGT in IVF. So please, please, please uh, come and support our student next week, Tuesday at 8 p.m. for their presentation. And anybody, any science who really have need a voice to the University of Kent weekly webinar, please drop us a line. We are very happy to welcome you. Uh, Dr. Abdullah came back. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, we are wrapping, we are wrapping up. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, to our to your audience at Sharjah University and the people come to see you today. Thank you, Shadi. Uh, sorry, I went to prepare my dinner. It was in the fire. That's <laughs> 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 uh, well, I, I just I thank you really uh, very much for Professor Darren and yourself and uh, Mayasa to prepare this uh, webcam and uh, I really uh, get benefit from the previous uh, webcams and inshallah the coming uh, webcams which give a really informative uh, information and uh, uh, well uh, just I'm supporting uh, the, uh, especially the audience who are in the UAE or in Arab countries who I found from the literature review that we have a shortage of the specialist in uh, IVF and reproduction generally, either in human or animals. So uh, I'm really supporting them uh, to have uh, a degree or at least uh, who, who are graduated already from science, they can take advanced courses and get a license uh, to work uh, in this field, especially there are much, much demand in terms of the job market. So uh, they, they offer really good, very good package and uh, the points that uh, this is, in fact, comparing with the other science or other, other technology, it's still young. So the people who are interested and has uh, encouragement to, to, to work uh, in this field where they're going to produce and making the uh, novel things or create something new in the reproduction. You know that the percentage of the successful or the achievement of the IVF in human, it's not more than 40%. Apart from, I think, in UK, one of the centers who make it about 80%. I think your center in uh, UK, Shadi. So uh, why encourage the people who are really interested in this field and they're going to find a lot of opportunity. In fact, other fields, uh, including genetics, uh, including cytogenetics, it's, there are, I think, uh, uh, overqualified people where the IVF is not, and especially the, this field, it can accept any field in science, either a veterinarian or uh, biomedical or uh, biologist or uh, biochemist. Uh, the biochemist. Uh, this is my advice, and uh, thank you again for inviting me for the lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. It's been an honor. Uh, our uh, prof assistant professor in Sharjah University, uh, he is a PhD in, in genetics from the University of Kent and he run a lot of uh, teaching program at the, at the University of Sharjah in the science is, is school. So if you want to get in touch with Dr. Abdullah, uh, please do. He is so advocate for the IVF and he wants a lot of IVF scientists to come and help in making IVF babies and increase the babies, especially now when their infertility is increasing. It's been an honor. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Abdullah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Professor Darren, our professor from the University of Kent, from hosting the, uh, our weekly webinar uh, from the University of Kent. He could not be with us uh, anymore, so I will say on his behalf, thank you for everybody who attended. And uh, we are uh, creating a community every week 
on Tuesday to come today. It just was special for Dr. Abdullah, but we will come back next Tuesday.